Welcome to our series on business control, a new organizational discipline. In this program, we're going to address the most frequent question we get from customers. What do you think about ethics training? Well, you can see from the subtitle what we think about it, but let's find out why. The deal or no deal question is, when it comes to controlling your business, what briefcase do you select? Is it finance or auditing, compliance, systems, advisors, or training? Well, for many customers, it's the ethics case. The idea is to focus on ethics to turn your whole organization into a bunch of honest abes. So let's take a look at what Biz Control Solutions Research has discovered. Organizations typically have three options in improving ethical behavior. Let's take a look at the first option, which is to legislate ethics. Now there's lots of outside agencies eager to help you with this. Uh, Department of Justice and Labor, SEC, EEOC, just to name a few. Let's don't forget the good old IRS. There's even a dummies book for Sarbanes-Oxley, which just absolutely cracks me up. So there's plenty of outside compliance, regulation, and penalties attached. Well, then you have your own internal policies and procedures with your standard penalty up to and including termination. So how has all this regulation and punishment been working for you? Well, as we mentioned in an earlier program, anywhere in the world on any day you can check the news and find an article related to lack of business control. Here's one where the executive in question is doing jail time. Here, top executives resign because they used illegal methods to spy on fellow board members while trying to stop information leaks. In this one, an executive generated outrageous bills for questionable personal expenses. You just can't make this stuff up. And it's not just individuals. Hundreds of respected companies were caught up in the executive compensation backdating scandal. A Forbes article summarized some of the situations, charging the company for personal events and goods, questionable entertainment and travel, sometimes in the millions of dollars. And the list of punishments included restitution, resignations, probation, house arrest, even jail time. The threat of harsh punishments like this, along with the public humiliation, didn't stop these executives at all. It's like the country western song about the little white tank top. One of the lines is, I know what I was feeling, but what was I thinking? Well, so much for legislating ethics. Well, next let's take a look at ethics training. That's a very popular approach with many organizations. There's even a journal of business ethics education that you can find on the internet. But can you really train employees on ethics? Well, first you need to understand what you have to work with. Cheating is an everyday event for the newest members of the workforce. A Rutgers survey of over 4,000 high school students found that nearly three quarters admitted cheating on tests. Almost all of them cheated on their homework and over half plagiarized. Cheating is commonplace in high school and there is no stigma in doing it. But it gets better once they get to college, right? Well, let's focus on business schools. For accreditation, the American Association of Collegiate Schools of Business requires colleges to include ethics education in their undergraduate business and graduate management programs. So how's that working? Well, as reported by Bloomberg, a survey of over 5,000 graduate business students was conducted in the U.S. and Canada. Over half the graduate B-School students admitted cheating, which suggests that the actual total is likely significantly higher. And note the quote from the article, if you're looking for honesty, apparently B-School isn't the place to find it. And then the warning, if you don't like the current crop of shysters, wait until this group takes over. And it's not just the students, the schools themselves are cheating. Remember the scandal over colleges getting kickbacks for student loans? And I love this one. Two priests in Florida were indicted for embezzling millions of dollars in donations. You know, you could argue that they had the best ethics training on the planet and it still wasn't enough. Finally, a finance exec told us about attending a very prestigious ethics training program years ago. Now it's off his resume. Why? Well, it's conducted by Arthur Anderson. No comment required. Whether it's businessmen out of control, athletes on steroids, or kids cheating in school, we simply live in what Arthur, author David Callahan calls the cheating culture, subtitled, Why People Are Doing Wrong to Get Ahead. And you know what today's workers think about ethics training? They think it's hilarious. They think it's a joke. They see honesty taken advantage of. They see loyalty rewarded with layoffs. They see executives grabbing dollars by the fistful, so they see no problem whatsoever in grabbing their own nickels and dimes for themselves. 
Training isn't going to change that. Face it, according to Robert Folgem, the only real ethics training anyone needs happens in kindergarten and is simply play fair and don't cheat. If employees didn't buy into it then, they're not going to buy into it now. So if we can't legislate ethics and we can't train for them, well, we're left with hiring ethical employees. You know, this is the classic HR axiom. You train for skills, but you hire for traits. And if good ethics is a moral trait, well, then we have to hire only ethical people. Now, here's what the hiring manager faces. You know, the typical rule of thumb in a retail situation is that 15% of the people are honest all the time. If you give them back too much change, they'll return it, even if the cashier goes, huh? Because they're not used to it. Now, 5% of the people are dishonest all the time. They're trying to steal from you every chance they get. What does that leave? Well, that leaves the 80% in the middle. What about them? What do you do about them? Well, these are the folks who are honest or dishonest depending upon the chance of getting caught. You know, if there's a security camera in the corner blinking at them, well, then they'll be honest. But if there's an overturned armored car with money blowing across the street, then they'll be grabbing everything they can and making a run for it. You know, a perfect example of this is paying taxes. An IRS audit study found that the percent of people misstating income is directly related to how much third-party reporting to the IRS is required. Where everything is tied down with W-2s, you see our 5% or so consistent cheater number. But where there's little reporting, such as with self-employed income or small businesses, that skyrockets to over 50%. It's that middle group trying to figure out what they can get away with. What some companies then do is psychologically test for ethics. You know, that's a discussion for another program, but we have serious concerns about the validity and reliability of such measures. So a hiring manager is faced with a simple numbers problem. There just aren't enough honest 15 percenters to go around if you even know how to find them in the first place. Training isn't going to change the five percenters who cheat, and HR has no control over the behavior of the 80 percenters in the middle once they're on the job. You know, making ethics a hiring issue is just not going to work. There, there's nothing left. Does that mean we're out of luck? Well, nope. Turns out there's a fourth option, business control. As you saw in previous programs, it's a new organization-wide process that integrates and expands upon existing controls and lowers both cost of control and cost of needless expense. It is the new core competency for executives, line managers, and frontline personnel in a variety of departments across the entire organization. So we come back to our initial deal or no deal question. Which briefcase do you select? Answer, none of these you pick the business control briefcase to maximize your winnings. Anything else, it's a misguided solution.